All right, welcome all. Plan Team Weekly. Where are we? September 7, 2023. Uh, so I've got a few things that I added to the agenda. First thing was just a reminder for the folks attending this Plan Weekly that we have dates for the Plan Team Day uh, for this quarter. They are going to be on the 12th and 13th of October. I've linked the um, the issue where people are suggesting or adding themselves to um, to what are they like hourly sessions throughout the day. Um, so if you would like to lead a session or give a talk or cook for us or show us how to cook. Feel free to add yourself to that issue. Cool. All right, uh, two big picture updates. Uh, I wanted to discuss Melissa's note from the uh, plan channel around issuables or legacy issuables, um, which are primarily issues, legacy issue um, and legacy epic view that we're concerned with. Um, how we've decided as an organization to uh, not dedicate um, dedicate time to new feature development for those legacy uh, those legacy issuables. Thank you for turning that into a link over to that. Um, but I did link to the update in the handbook uh, around that. Um, essentially, it means we're uh, dedicating all of our future feature work to work items. Anyone have any questions, concerns, thoughts about that? Um, yeah, on he will being very selective in approving new changes, including community contributions. Does that mean that we would be more likely to say no if a community contributor submitted a change? And then we said, we like if it's too big or something, then we say we can't look at this right now, or what's the like how or where will we be enforcing like i understand us not picking stuff up but if there's like a community push for adding stuff to issues do we just try to tell people like put it on work items instead or maybe not important we can see if that actually happens in a one it'll be fine yeah i mean ideally ideally we get to it before uh a lot of work has been put in to um to a feature um like and then we can comment on the issue for something we can yeah hold off or do it this way yeah yeah i think there was also some uh conversations around um updating some of the labels we have on the legacy planning object uh issues uh because i think a lot of them still have like i don't know what the like People yes, is now, accepting but contributions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I we'll think that's probably worthwhile. Yeah, and we might want to think about adding a note in those issues, also saying that you know we're not going to stop people from, or we may not stop people from working on features, but we won't help um, them. <laughs> well, we it may take a bit longer to get things through the workflow to get to uh um, to get into uh master and production yeah. I'll type it here what I just said Does anyone else have any thing else they want to say about that? Um, Hi Charlie. I I'll I'll raise it here. 
Oh, sorry. Did you have something, Charlie? No. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to be here because I never get to come because yeah. of my kids ruining, logistically ruining everything. Bless them. <laughs> <laughs> um the it's a question i don't think anyone has the answer to here but i'm gonna raise it hopefully we get the answer async is uh does this apply to ux paper cuts um i'm kind of hoping it does um because it's it's kind of outside of our team processes um but it does impact our features so I don't know, um, but I will make sure to ping Melissa to answer this like after the answer she watches to that. And if, it, and if it does apply to UX paper cuts, then yeah, we need to make sure that they know about it because they don't always let us know when they're making changes uh, to plan features. We don't always, we're not always the ones reviewing it. So um, yeah, that'd be good to know. Thanks. Yeah, I, ideally, I would uh, basically prefer otherwise, where if it's a minor UX improvement, like something that doesn't require a lot of effort, then we should probably fix it rather than waiting for object to be converted to work items and wait for eternity uh, for that change to show up. Like we have uh, several places across legacy objects where something is not looking right from UX perspective, like something is broken or misaligned. And if we enforce not to make those changes for the sake of like a polished experience, then it's it's not a good idea in my opinion. So Yeah, so the I reason I am sort of against, like if it's really minor things, sure. I would still prefer if it was maintained by someone within plan. Um, because in my experience, UX paper cuts can have more impact than initially um like envisioned and I've noticed like side a lot of side effects and regressions that were unexpected um which is what I'm worried about in this case yeah I think it's it's just a matter of identifying like how much effort uh, does a particular change require and if 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 the impact is higher or the effort is a lot then we de determine that it's it's better not to do that change Okay, uh, I want to move on to next one. Kushal, can you finish commenting or uh, writing down what you said? You don't mind? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, I'll do. Okay, um, I wanted to uh, to talk through the the designs from Emily. Um, I think she uh, she created them or added them to the issue couple days ago now um around some of the they have been doing some research around all the different flows that um that are available within the product to create a planning object so i believe um uh, she was just looking at how to create issues epics maybe just issues and epics and tests maybe um uh, with the idea being that there would be a way to consolidate uh, the creation of them all. Because right now we have, like, to create a issue, you can create it at the slash uh, new route. Um, you can create it from an epic. Um, I think there are a couple other ways that you can create issues. And then the same for tasks and and epics, there's just different places where you can create all those things. Um, so when we move to everything over to work items, or even just for the creation of current work items, um, she created some designs around uh, what we want that um, what we want that single creation to look like if it is going to be a single creation. Uh, so let me share my screens, and then we can just kind of go through her designs, which explains it a lot better than, than I can. 
Second. Okay, y'all see the agenda? Yeah, cool. Okay, so this is from within uh, the list view. We'd go back to the... Um, the drop down button here uh, to create any kind of work item that can be created from within that or that can be displayed from within that list. Uh, so once group level work items and epics are work items uh, in the group issue or in the group list, you'd be able to create an epic in addition to the issues tasks objectives here. Um, clicking on an item in the drop down would take you to the modal view uh, from within that. I believe the list view is still behind this, even though it's not showing here. I think that would be the idea that the modal would show up in the list view. Yeah, Wait. so uh, screenshots contain model, but uh, Emily did mention uh, in the video walkthrough that they eventually would want to go with the draw approach instead of model. Okay. Is that so this decided? Eventually be draw. Yeah, so their, their inclination is towards uh, draw instead of model. Uh, it is just that as of now, only model is available as uh, active implementation. Uh, I, I believe uh, since Natalia already had POC in place, I don't know whether uh, uh, we would go uh, with draw our approach in the first iteration itself. Okay. Is there a video in this issue that you were saying? There's a video. Uh, yeah, just, just a second. I'm pasting a permalink uh, to that discussion, which contains both a uh, Figma file as well as a uh, video walkthrough. Here it is. Uh, in the agenda, I have pasted link to that. Ah, okay, perfect. Cool. So Emily's video walkthrough, obviously I haven't watched it yet, but it's probably better than uh, going through the designs. Um, so if you get a chance later on, make sure to watch that video as I will. Um, but for now, we can continue going through these designs. And then Kushal can, uh, you've watched it, I'm assuming, already, Kushal? Yeah, I watched it, and uh, I, I also asked a couple of follow-up questions in that same thread cool. uh, when I noticed uh, some things different. OK. OK, and then this is the same the same crate view. Um, again, in the screenshots, it's modal, uh, but more than likely, it'll move to the drawer. Um, similar to what we have for uh, OKRs on uh, in the GitLab uh, project where they're active or where they're trying on. Um, but this one just adds a location selection. Okay, and allows the user to edit it. So I'm assuming then this location is would be available on the normal work item view to easily allow for moving of the work item. Yes, that's correct. That's what it is. Okay. Um, that's interesting because I've I don't know is moving. Does moving happen a lot? Like an, a lot where, or enough where 
we would want to get I don't, easy access? To? I don't think it's well supported at the moment, but we do keep getting customer requests to be able to do that. So definitely something that we want to make easier for work items than it currently is for legacy issuables. Okay. Yeah, I think there's um, right now just we want to um, we want to kind of clean up the whole moving process right now because there's there's different discrepancies like um, uh, like sometimes I don't even know if the task get moved along with it or there's different issues with um with auth and permissions um so that's a lot of the stuff we kind of gotta clean up eventually um or before we do something like this um but i am interested to see like this makes it pretty high like this is a pretty high value when you say clean up you don't mean fixing it for legacy probably because i don't think we'd want to spend time on this but what would be super useful so it would be to have a really clear like definition from product of like the different use cases of moving things attached to it, depending on permissions and I don't know, confidentiality, parents, children related, um, and like sort of have different use cases and a description of the expected behavior when we do moving. Uh, Cause I think that's something that's missing overall is just a clear, definition of expected behavior for these use cases. Yeah. It'll also be interesting how it ties to um the like we want to get away from the idea of promoting um work items, but how it kind of ties to promoting of of work I, items. Um, I don't think i mean i guess we, we still have to promote to quick action but also looking at what we've done recently like it's more that we update the type like we can change like an issue to a task or task to an issue and it's not necessarily a promotion per se it's more like just a change of type um and i don't know if it's a wording issue if there's really a difference yeah, between the changing the type and promoting yeah, that's that's correct, uh, Flory. That when we change the when we basically promote a, a smaller object to basically a super object, like say promoting task to an issue, it will technically be just a type change, and additionally, it will start showing additional widgets which are otherwise not supported on tasks. Similarly, if uh, someone is trying to promote an issue to an epic, provided that both those objects are now work items, then it will behave in a similar fashion. Unlike what we do right now, where we close the issue and then create an epic and uh, copy over everything, including description as well as discussions to the newly created epic, which won't be the case uh, when we uh, have both of them as work item, where it will be just a simple type change. And then the object will start listing in a different place. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering if it's a question of wording as well, because I'm kind of thinking like long term vision for work items where people like sort of have their own tree. It doesn't necessarily have to be like features at the top, epic and then issue. They could have their own objects. And then promotion may not mean anything anymore. It will just maybe be a graph of things that can relate to each other. And it's just a type. It doesn't matter if it's a promotion or a downgrade or whatever. It's just a change of type. Yeah. And then also like once we get to um, like it not really mattering, matter, mattering, matter, yeah. Um, whether it's a uh, group level work item or a project level work item, that they're all kind of namespace level work items. So switching between um, like an epic from a, a group to a project should be done pretty seamlessly, and there shouldn't be any issues with with that, with switching that, with switching that hierarchy um, in the future. Hopefully. Okay, cool. Uh, what do we 
we got here for three. I, I agree with your earlier point, though, that that location as like the second fear on the page feels quite front and center for what is probably less common. Like I'm reading descriptions more often than I'm moving issues to different groups. Yeah, to different groups or different projects. Yes. Yeah, like I assume they're correct. And being able to move them easily is good. So having that somewhere, but not necessarily quite so high up in the page. Yeah. I wonder if there will also be less movement um, when there are, like when we, when hierarchy is less tied to groups and projects. I guess we'd have to figure out like what what is the reason people are moving issues um, or moving work items or planning objects today. Um, we think they would be doing it mostly to fit Use under stats. a stats. Yes. Yeah. Meeting SLAs by closing all the issues on the thirtieth of the month. That's what you do. Yeah. Also, I have read. <laughs> I would never do that myself. Okay, uh, so here we have the uh, edit views. Is this, is this a new one also related to? So of all the biggest changes uh, that I noticed in these uh, designs, one thing that particularly stood out, so if you zoom in one of those designs and look at where the discussions begin, right above that activity header. Uh, notice how that related items and child items are no longer showing uh, as, a, as a container widget, but rather simple buttons. So in case any issue or an epic doesn't have a child item or a linked item associated with it, we won't be showing a full widget container with the empty state and everything. We would just show buttons like add a linked item and then Clicking on that button would show the form and then we'll start adding those uh, child items. So it basically uh, saves some vertical space uh, and horizontal space within the page. And I, I did ask like uh, in, in case user uh, is adding an item for the first time, do we have the designs of how, where the form would exactly show up and uh, how the UX for adding items as related or child would look like? Apparently they don't have the designs yet. Uh, but that's uh, a, a stark difference from what we have been doing so far, like having a widget always persistent on the page, regardless of whether there are any child items or not. It's so much better. I love it. Yes, definitely. And, the... side, and sidebar doesn't collapse, by the way. So that's one more thing that I didn't enjoy. Um, yeah, wait, the, so where do we... The on the right is controversial. That's going to come up. We should swap those. But those buttons instead of the giant gray blocks is great. I think. Yeah. So how would you get to the view of the child items then? So if there, if there are some, then it will be there, but if it's empty, it doesn't show a big gray box saying there's nothing oh, in this list. Okay. This list has been left blank intentionally. And so okay. you'd have some, I assume you click that and then get some little inline form for creation. And then if there are related child items or linked items or designs, then they'll be there but we don't have the empty states for all of them. Um, Kushal, you said that the modal was a sidebar for these. Uh, is that the case for these ones as well? Or it was just for the create? No, so uh, so edit? that is an open question. Like they haven't uh, added any design on how that form would look like when you click one of those buttons, like whether the form would be expanding in place within that page itself or whether it will be revealing some drawer or model no clarity on that yet. So I'm still not sure how the sidebar two column view will work in a draw because they're much smaller. So what I what I do know, and I haven't watched the video, so I don't know in this context, but in general, I know that we are trying to avoid the model um, altogether uh, because workflow issues, I think mostly. Um, it's not a, an experience we want 
overall. The drawer is the way to go. Um, it could stack. I think there was a conversation where we could have multiple drawers stack to view multiple objects. So in this case, it could stack potentially with the sidebar or it could go over it. Um, can imagine that. The thing is, so I understand how a drawer would work for the create form, but for edit, like, don't we want to do inline editing mostly? TBD. <laughs> TBD. That's still, cool. still up for debate. Yeah, it's still, there's no decision. There's not a decision on it yet. Uh, but so it's, it's actively... a really cool pattern. Like for me, it does make sense to do inline editing so much you're visualizing the object and then you just click on the thing you want to change um but yeah okay fair enough let's just thought i'd ask the question yeah um so okay with the form uh there's still being a question on the design of the form uh so there may still be a form here for add child item that shows up here we haven't decided that it's going to show the same modal view or drawer view as this uh, is this one Pujol. yeah sorry uh, we're so it's not set that clicking on that um, add new or add child item uh, is not may not show this view to create it's, the work item. Not, uh, it, it is not explicitly mentioned uh, either way, like okay. whether it will be within the model or not. I would assume that we won't be showing as many info items in edit view of a single object because we don't want to expose all those widgets at once. So if someone is yeah. say viewing an issue only, then we will show widgets for adding child items or related items. But if uh, someone is editing the issue itself, then we would we would be hiding uh, those additional widgets. Okay, yeah, because I think there had been comments still on um, users wanting to or wanting the ability to quickly create like multiple work items, either multiple issues or or tasks. Um, as opposed to right now, like if they wanted to create five issues, uh, even from within an Epic, it's still like a bunch of different clicks, um, to get there. Uh, but there was also comments where users want to be able to edit more, uh, uh, more than just the title when they're quickly creating, uh, a work item. Oh, okay. Yeah. Still. Sounds like we're still doing research on that. Uh, change type. Uh, so this is what we were talking about earlier around promotion or changing of the work item type. Uh, this goes into a little bit more detail. It's going to be in the drop down, uh, or the proposal is to be in the drop down. And um, oh, that's interesting. So it's going to. The drop down is going to like. Do we have this pattern where we slide in a uh, sub drop down? We have before for create label, and ah, yeah. we had it on boards at some point, but I think that's gone. But there's a there's a few of those. It's still an up in the air thing. Okay. Interesting. Other work item types. Any questions on changing of types? Okay, so I guess this is a different proposal for location. Um, which is more similar to how we did we move move issue to the drop down in issues? I think that was one of the 
we just so it's, have uh, still part of sidebar it is still part of sidebar okay um so this is just moving it to the drop down in work items and uh, the same kind of sub drop down pattern here but combined with the design on uh, that she had in the other move location uh design All right, so that is the crate flow. Um, yeah. Questions, comments that we didn't talk through there? All right, if you have any thoughts, please add that, add them to the uh, uh, to the issue that's linked in the agenda. And then, Lori, you've got the next topic. I just want to give a quick update on a uh, key result I'm leading at the moment, uh, which is uh, reducing our flaky tests. Um, so for this quarter, we're aiming to fix and unquarantine 25 quarantine tests across the stage. Um, I want to thank everyone who's done any of them so far. We fixed 16, uh, which is pretty good. Um, I think like given how early we're in the quarter, I I think I was very conservative in setting the goal. We're probably gonna go beyond, um, which is great. Um the yeah, like the goal is to increase. <laughs> Test coverage, reduce regressions and such. Um, so yeah, thank you. And keep picking up stuff. Let me know. Thank you. This is a good one. So are we identifying any pattern that we can avoid while, I mean, to avoid flaky tests? Uh, to uh, so if you want to pick stuff up, um, I, I've i done a small selection in a comment. So there's a few things. It's, it's all in the comments, but I can bring things up. Uh -huh. I'll put stuff in the notes. So I did a vague initial selection of low-hanging fruits. So I'll just put them in the agenda. Sure. A lot of them have already been picked up, though. Um, and they were, they were mostly front end, um, cause that's, I know <laughs> that's what I, why I know it's low hanging and in the key results, uh, there is also a board that John's shared, if I can find it. So this is, yeah, I got it. Uh, I'll put it as well. So if there is nothing in the list, I made initially um you can pick up from the board uh that productivity engineering uses to track flaky tests um you know organized by severity as well which is a good way to go about it um so yeah do you want to comment on your chart, Donald? No, nah, it's just a chart for project management's flaky test numbers. Um, I was uh, hesitant to, or I was uh, thinking for our, for the project or for the um, uh, group KR uh, that we would just try to get to a uh, net zero where we would flatten out this chart. So as we get new flaky tests, at least fix the ones, <laughs> the ones, the new ones. Um, but we're doing better than that. And uh, we're already, we're already less than we were last month, I which is great. Don't, oh, so it's like, it's just gone down just over the last month, basically. Cause overall yeah. the trend is up overall, but that was like over multiple years. So yeah. Yeah. Um, 
yeah this, we do so the, the problem so this is something for the future i've had some i've given some thoughts to this um in terms of like more of a global process and the way we collaborate with productivity engineering um the issue is when there's a flaky test it's it either gets retried if it passes nothing happens and it may be flaky like every i don't know maybe it fails every three months and it's sort of like falls through the cracks or um it just gets quarantined and then it falls into a backlog and it takes a month before we get to it so um there's i think a lot we can do in collaborating with productivity engineering and improving our processes on how we catch flaky tests and how us as product focused engineers are made aware of it because like a lot of the time we're not even aware they just get quarantined and then one day we look through our aspect test and like oh why is this quarantine i never heard of this like this happens to me all the time um so i think that we can look into just improving communication and processes around this so that we sort of tackle it as we catch them hopefully for the future but for now it's more like this quarter we're just exercising our um skills at fixing aspect tests and learning what's wrong what makes them flaky and how we can improve them and then hopefully we'll have a strategy a uh, more long-term vision to tackle them as they appear yeah do we have any documentation or training or anything on how to reproduce flaky tests that's my biggest problem i can never um i don't have an answer simon may know something but i i i not that i know of yeah maybe um on that kind of depends on the instructions and the tests so it's like on the reporter that can vary a bit there's not really i'll get back to you you mean the way it fails for just how to make it reliably fail so you can test yeah when you fix it so there's a lot of things that can make a test fail. Uh, sometimes it's environmental issues. Sometimes it's selectors that are not specific enough. Um, and like the pages at different loading states, depending on which environment it runs on. And sometimes it will pass, sometimes it will fail because the selector is not specific enough. So my recommendation is use data test ID for testing, obviously um and yeah like it can be really tricky because a lot of the time it will pass on your local machine that's fail in the pipeline because there's much more traffic going on servers so um yeah like run sometimes it's good to run the pipeline multiple times to see what happens i do that uh, when i try to fix fake tests um yeah other than that it's really trial and error Next question. Always, um, oh, go ahead, Rajan, you first. Yeah, I, I just was telling that it, it is always tricky to um, reproduce the production issues directly. I'm pretty sure I saw a way for some for doing the like dev tools uh, network throttling can can often help for reproducing stuff for things that are waiting for a response then it's less likely to see it on local when you have very fast networks versus testing on an actual instance. And then you get latency and stuff for updates. Um, I don't remember how to do it. That was a while ago, but that could be worth digging up again. Um, or just adding yeah. weights randomly throughout the test. It kind of depends on what the failure is and how the test is written. Cause somewhere like, like for filtering search results or something, then it's like expect you see three things and then type this and you should only see one thing and there's like depending on how that test is written and what it's waiting for it fail in different ways i have a really hard time uh following shared examples within our feature specs that's where it gets difficult for <laughs> me i don't know if that's it's it's probably just me. Um, it's universal. Yeah. Yeah. Ruby yeah. itself feels that. 
I've I've noticed Imagine. though it's I don't know if something's changed or if something I've noticed that was before and I never noticed before but like I had a thing pointing at the actual shared example instead of the parent test recently failing in the pipeline and that was really good um so I I was able to it was pointing the line within the shared example it was the first time I noticed that so I don't know maybe something's changed Oh, it sometimes oh, yeah. does that. It sometimes when it's the other way around, when it only okay, points to the so shared example, and you, you can't tell a... which which instance of the shared example is failing or which test. So is there a way to make it more consistently behave this way? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't just just like a button to. I I think there is is like I just want to rerun failing tests locally button. Yeah. Um. Do we have uh, like a policy or rule around when we quarantine uh, a test? Like if it. So I don't know if it's well defined, but when I was looking at productivity engineering issues, basically what they do is that something fails. They retry. If it passes on retry, they just close the issue and nobody ever hears about it. Or they quarantine if it fails on second try, basically, roughly like like finger in the wind type estimation. Yeah, unless uh, author of that test uh, notices that master broke because of that, and they offer to fix it for good, then uh, productivity engineering uh, would basically assign that broken master issue to them. Otherwise, they would just quarantine and forget about it. And then it falls in the backlog. <laughs> Has the new process around um, broken master alerts within project uh, stage uh, channels, has that helped you all be more aware of broken master issues or flaky tests? Or I wasn't was not, aware uh, of this feature. I've oh, never, really? I haven't noticed the broken master in the plan stage. So. Oh, no, it would happen in product planning. Uh, we get a few on in the project management channel. Oh, okay. Well, I well, haven't we seen anything in product master. planning. That's yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't break master. No, nice. it's not about. It's not that we're breaking it in project management. It's that I someone am. else is breaking something that's assigned yeah, that we're it's not, it's not for. us. <laughs> it's not us. It's people from outside the team breaking our features. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So no, you haven't really, you haven't seen those yet. Simon, I know you have, you've seen them because yeah, we get, we've gotten a few on the project management side. Comment. Oh, what do you say? No comment? No comment. Yeah. I, um, I did realize that I did not have uh, the ability to, as a non-maintainer, um, to retry, uh, retry pipelines. Um, in master for those so because most of the time like you like you said flory it's just a a rerun and then ignore um and i wasn't able to do that so i wasn't even able to really help broken but masters. i don't i don't think it's a good behavior because if it fails once it's gonna fail at another point later yeah, and then we have our we have bad numbers uh on our dashboards so yeah it would be nice to just know about it Really. I wonder if we track that anywhere, like any number of failures that have that have happened. There is a dashboard um, on the key result I've shared um, about. I think it's more like tracking the causes for broken master. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Oh, I can't. Well, it's on the key result. I can't. I need to log in. So I don't know. But it's it's in there. Um, but I don't think it's more like it's around broken master in general, not just flaky tests.
All righty. If we have anything else in the agenda. Nope. Anyone else have anything else to discuss? Oh, wow. It's almost the end of the meeting time. Look at that. We filled up almost the entire time. But yeah, does anyone else have anything else they want to discuss in this front end edition <laughs> of Plan Weekly? All righty. Call today. Thanks, all. Good seeing y'all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.